<laughs> uh, Dennis, are you still alive? Are we allowed to be happy well, this hour? Well, after all, out of every day must come at least one happy, happy hour. hour. I well, say yes. Here we are. Beer is an essential essential grocery item. Yes, indeed. Here in the here in, in uh, Michigan, mm-hmm. and so uh, I've stocked up on Alaska, not more than my fair share. Exactly your fair share. Exactly. That's right. Whole. Everyone and, should have uh, a little bit of ale. Right. So, anyway, so we're uh, we're we're hunkered down. We have uh, all non-essential clothes. We now look increasingly like Spain has for some time in your prior episode, which can be heard at happyhour.fm. Last episode was 052, number 52. So, today we're in our second year of recordings. Yes. Time be damned. Time be damned. You know, if if you played one card out of a deck for every episode that we've done, we would now be on the Joker. Which brings me to my first invention. So You invented something. Social distance. Yes. Social distance. I'm an old man walking through the woods. Gets a little muddy. I have a cane. I use the cane just to give me an extra support whenever it gets a little slippery. When I lift the cane up, it shoots out a laser beam three feet, which gives me and anyone near me six feet of understanding. And when it makes that noise as someone walks within that path, it makes a pleasant little sound. It could be a little bell. It could be a little, hello. It could be a little, back off, fucker. So it's not a, <laughs> light, know, it's, it's not a lightsaber. It's going, wong, wong, wong. <laughs> as you're... Well, the, the, if the implication is that, people would be more respectful. Then I'm not saying we shouldn't bring that into effect. But we don't want you tramping through the woods with your dog and thinking, like, we're well, in a hurry, and the path is narrow, and you're going to come within three feet. Yo, dude, and if you're coming at me with a dog, it's like, Danger, danger, Will Robinson. I mean, maybe on the cane, you have four or five recordings that you can press. And and one of them is danger, danger, Will Robinson, within six foot. Or maybe another one, one is, hey, man, back off, man, which you could probably just say instead of hit the cane. But anyway, there's that. So, so, so your, your, invention in, one. your invention is you're walking along in the woods and someone comes up to assault you and you raise your cane and it says, <laughs> hello. And then they're like, oh, well, geez, I didn't mean to get so close to you. Uh, I won't take. I won't take all your money. No, then, sir. That's, that's all. Oh my God! You, what sort of you anti? Are so twisted. What sort you of? Are, what sort of defense? So twisted. Defense the invention is this? Hello. You had to drink. This is supposed to be hilarious hour. It's supposed to be happy hour. You've gone. You've gone overboard. Wow. Once again. So you're just. So your idea is you're walking along, in the woods. It's dark. A, a, well, no, a, a, no. a figure approaches. No. You don't have to. And, it and so you raise your cane, you and your cane, your cane, your cane, you is, dark your cane is 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 using uh, lidar or whatever to measure the distance. And if whatever yeah. it is, uh, I mean, within, you might, you, it might as well be a, 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 a radar gun, you know, detecting their, their speed to you know predict how close they're going to be by the time the the recording is over. Well, and then and then so they get of- they get close, they get close, and your cane goes do do do, back off, please. Or no, that's rude. You are too close. That's rude. No social distancing. I'm telling you, I am I'm infected. Telling you, that's why you have. That's why you have to have the buttons. So it isn't up to you. Because if somebody is running towards you with their dog and they're far off, you push the button. It says, "Whoa, slow down, dude!" Loud enough that you you know you may not have the wherewithal, but your cane is pre-programmed. So that's just part one. So you're uh, you're about that. You're, you're, when you're, you're, you need a mass-produced. I mean, this is like a walking sticks. This is like a, a Star Trek phaser. So you're shooting lasers you from your hip. <laughs> well, you, you could also imagine an app on your phone that when you swung your arm and it was at its pinnacle, moving out, that it had a five foot four inch bead, mm-hmm. and that was when folks were coming towards you on your left side or whatever side you wanted to be on. But that wouldn't require a walking stick. But the walking stick you should have anyway when you're at my age or at any age because. You don't. What you don't want to do. You don't is know when a bear fall is going to fall down. Well, no, no, no. So fall down and have to go to the doctor. It's like what's wrong? Oh, and you can't it's go to the like, doctor anymore. I fell down, and they're like, no, no, no. A lot of people are falling down. We're not seeing any of them. Yes. Well, what do you mean? No, it's not a high priority. Is anything broken? I don't know. Well, even if it is, no. You we can't come in hospital. Yeah. No. no, I've been I've been very very uh, serious with my children uh, during this time of 
extreme quarantine, where I have told them, look, uh, you need to, you can't be running around the house in your in your socks or, you know, just being slightly reckless. Because if you fall down or you sprain your ankle, there is no hospital to take you to. We're not going to take you to the hospital right. because you take you to the hospital and very likely some of us die. So we're, if you get hurt, you're hurt and, you know, you'll deal with it. There's no, there are no doctors for the f- slightly foreseeable future. Uh, personally, I'm way more pessimistic than, than other people are about our c- circumstance. I think it's going to be months and months while, while we're stuck at home. Oh, yeah. Uh, and possibly even a year before it's really safe to walk outside and... Because and... Oh, what we don't know is the uh, incidence of reoccurrence. Exactly. There's going to be, there's gonna be case, ripples we don't, that come back. China can tell us. Uh, Korea, North Korea, can, uh, South Korea can tell us. But, um, but we don't know. We don't know. All we know is that that it's it, you know it's gotten worse. Of course, you know Trump is like, you have no idea. You have no idea. I, I I've lost billions, billions. I've lost billions. I mean, it's it's when you're a rich man and I'm rich. I'm very very rich, and I've lost billions. I want you to do a tape of a side by side and fucking Trump talking about his billions and the leader of the UK talk the speech he gave 20 minutes ago and put them side by side. They happen to fucking look alike. Uh-huh. With their their the weight of them and their crazy hair in each of them, but the difference, the stark difference, the UK prime minister absolutely was totally looking at the camera, saying what he believed, not missing a word, not making a mistake, passionate and focused, absolutely brilliant, and he stood Bri- up to the case. Brilliant. And on the other screen, on the other screen, show Trump talking about how much money he's lost as a president. He says, "But I don't care." I don't care. I mean, it's fine. It's it's worth it. Then why are you fucking complaining about it? Why are you what? What? Are you, and my wife and I, we get so crazy. We're screaming at the television. You fucking asshole. We just, and we just shut it off. We'd rather see clips of it later because it's so yeah. absolutely demoralizing. And well, he's, he's, uh, I think this you're. Is the deal. He's he's becoming immaterial. He's irrelevant. Nobody listens to him. Well, I'm, I'm afraid a small few may listen to him. But for us, he's irrelevant. He can say what he wants. Did you see the clip you could play this of Fauci when it's a close up clip? And what it yeah. shows is that Trump is introducing fucking uh, Secretary of State Pompeo and refers to the State Department. That is that is the deep, the deep State Department, as I like to call it. Yeah. And they do a close up of yeah. Fauci and he starts to giggle. Yes. And then does a face palm. And, and it is a hilarious moment. And Pompeo recovers to say, we know how much the president loves everybody in the State Department. And Trump leans into the mic and says, yeah, that's a good answer. Uh, the, uh, the deep state permit. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. Increasingly I... looks like fucking Elmer Fudd with his fucking, his bon beyond fucking hair sticking out his fucking Elmer Fudd's fucking uh, hunting cap. We ought, to do, we ought to do an overlay of Trump and, and Elmer Fudd. You know, I saw it, but we, you're, you're, very, with, you're very generous with my time, Dennis. <laughs> Come on, get on this stuff. <laughs> it's, it's not like you were working at home before all this stuff happened. Yeah, so, so is your business slowed down? You're, uh, hold on. Uh, your portrayal of Boris Johnson as being clever is a real insult to Trump because Boris Johnson is also a doofus, but he's a, and a, and a bullshitter. He's risen to the occasion. Well, that is the best it, thing I've ever heard the man say. Well, okay, that might be true. He's he's still a he's still a doofus. No, that, is, that is way behind uh, the the rest yes, of the world indeed. in their response. But this is the difference: is that Trump also was way behind and never got to the moment yet. Right. Well, I mean, Boris Johnson can can say a complete yes. sentence, like most of the other world leaders. More than that, you've got to see it. You've got to see it to okay. know what I mean. It is a forceful dialect. It is forceful. You will see it, and you will say it's about fuck fucking time. You fucking clown. <laughs> is what I thought. Yeah. But but then having said that, it was finally somebody, a clown, like our president's a clown, can rise to the moment and not be clown-like for the entire time. Right. And actually be inspiring because it was commanding, commanding, where Trump, he, if he isn't looking down at his paper, reading it, every time he looks up and does it, he says something stupid. He says, he's reading the paper, he says, we have declared an, a national emergency and then he looks up and he looks at the camera and he says, national emergency, two big words, <laughs> two, two of the biggest words, two big words. And then he looks back down at his paper again yeah. and, and then he gets some, you know, and it's, and as opposed to what, what, what you'll see from Johnson, 
you know, it's it's worth it's it's worth taking okay, a quick look at it. Right? The, the the real leadership. Anyway, the real leadership that I've seen. Uh, my favorite speech so far was um, a Canadian Prime Minister uh, Justin Trudeau. He he came out and clearly all bundled up on the steps of of his house or whatever. Uh, gave a really great speech where he said, "Look, we're all we're all suffering. We're going to get through this." We are spend. We're going to spend a bunch of national funds to make sure that the homeless and the people that work service jobs and all you people that are suffering because we had to close your jobs for public safety will be cared for, and just this uh, gorgeous like what what a nation should do for its people in a time of crisis, and yes. it's just such a huge and the leader's contrast. role and the leader's role is the communicator in chief. Right. The, oh my the, God. The, the, and so and says and somebody says to him that one of his political enemies. Mitt Romney is characterized as self, dis, uh, self uh, a quarantining because of potential contact with the uh, the one of the biggest idiots in the Senate that ever was, who took a test, and while he was waiting for the results, oh I know, went to the gym, Ted Cruz. went to the swimming pool, went to a luncheon meeting, talked to people, sat with people, ate with people while he was waiting for the test results. Mm-hmm. So somebody made him do it. And he said, oh, I didn't have to. And he ignored the fact that he was being tested. He didn't take it seriously. And now there are five. President Trump hears. He doesn't know this. He's in a news conference. He's been in a meeting. He says, reporter, well, who are the other four? And and the guy says, blah, blah, blah. And he says, and Mitt Romney. And Trump interrupts him and says, oh, gee, that's too bad. And the reporter says, is there some sarcasm there, sir? And Trump looks the other way and lies and says, oh, no, not at all. Moves over to the next question. Communicator in chief, you hope your enemies, your pu- yeah, you. It isn't a time for for coming together because you, sir, are a fucking imbecile, the imbecile in chief, mm-hmm. and his his ratings are going up. So how do you really his feel public approval rating? In some polls, it's fifty five percent. Don't get me started. Don't get me started. Look, in, oh, it's in, too late. In a, it's too late. You got me started. I think start. I didn't start shit. So the the uh, the the general dynamic of a crisis. Uh, C-9-11 is everyone out of fear rallies around their leader. In general, in a crisis, everyone becomes more conservative, like leaning to the right uh, politically, uh, and more for sure more willing to accept um, you know, government oversight and authoritarianism. Uh, but the other thing is when the economy is bad and people are un- generally unhappy with their circumstance in life, is also when people vote out the incumbent. Uh, if, in general, if if you're if the majority of people are more or less content with the way things are going, right. with the status right. quo, the incumbent gets reelected. Uh, but if people are not content, uh, that's when the incumbent can lose. Uh, see, uh, 2008 and 2016. You know, the people were displeased with enough people were displeased with the status quo in 2016 that they voted to uh, for the other party. So but the, the key know. to that, the key to that was turnout. And so such it is everywhere. The fact of the matter hasn't changed in Iowa. The Trump supporters are Trump supporters. They are a cult. There is no other way to describe it. And they may uh, have grown in some numbers on people on the, on the gray area fringe of being followers or not followers. And that shows itself in some of these approval ratings going up. But for the most part, it's a set number of people. And the fact of the matter is it's a rate against something. So if it's 38 percent of what? What is 100 percent? Well, the 100 percent is perhaps voters in 2016. What about the type of turnout for 2008? Right. Because if that's the numeric, we look a whole lot better because we know that there will be a turnout amongst the center to left leaning voting population that has never been seen before, which will make this a complete admonishment. And so with that in mind, um, this is sort of like Trump is the pestilence. And what the, what, what, what the Lord God is sending us is locusts, and that locust is eating the population, and that population is going to be decimated, but the Antichrist will be eliminated before the end of mankind. Amen, motherfucker. Yes. The uh, one thing that this, that this uh, virus thing has really highlighted to me and really um, become salient— is and which was what you just uh, similar to what you just referenced is uh, anytime you hear a percentage, 
it's important to ask, where did you get the denominator? Where, where are you dividing yes. by to get the percentage, percentage of what? Right. What is what is n? Because that's the question. Because well, what it, is n? The the problem with this with this with this viral crisis is you say, three uh, percent of people that have it die. Okay, fine. How did you measure that denominator? How, did you so test the people they only only the people they know who have it? And so exactly. that's exactly right. That's the question, and the equation is what is n? Give me the definition of n, the known factor, the baseline, the starting point. Right. 23% of what? Well, the growing numbers are, of course, as anyone with a brain in their head says, including a Cuomo, who's, ex who's exuding, sitting down nonchalantly, more traits of leadership than this country has seen in full view than I have seen in decades. He is the most competent son of a bitch I've ever sat and listened to. I haven't seen this, he but I, I've so, heard my friends have been, oh, have been, have been like, Cuomo is And if you really, want to, you really want to, there's a clip of, the, of uh, Mayor de Blasio <laughs> in New York City where he's warmed up, he's into it like maybe four or five minutes, and, and he's talking about the stuff we need. And then he says, but let me tell you this. This is my message to the federal government. If you don't act now, you are costing lives. This is unacceptable. His charade is, uh, is astounding. Then... Know that uh, uh, Governor Gretchen Whitmer uh, from Michigan had a press conference and, 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 and banned all businesses, but essential, et cetera, et cetera, as I mentioned earlier. And, and what she said was, let me be clear with you about the role of the federal government. These are the numbers we need. So many hundred thousand masks, so many million uh, 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 gowns, so many million. This is what we project based on what's happened in the past two weeks that we've been communicating to people. We got our shipment from the federal government today, it's not enough to last for one shift. Not a day, one shift. Mm -hmm. That's the allotment. And in the meantime, what we've done without any federal help, if we have found four million masks and four million this and three million, we're, we have had to get, we got to get more help from the feds. It's, it's stunning. Stunning. Yeah. Uh, the, it's really, it's going to be so many people are going to die because of this ineptitude. And all we can do is watch it and complain and podcast about it. And it's just uh, shit's going down. I have another idea on the six foot thing. Tell me your other idea on the six foot thing, Dennis. Does it involve so, lasers? No. Okay, darn. No, but you. this is something for you to do because you're young. and And so... You're walking along the path somewhere, street. I'm not. Sidewalk, I'm not allowed road. to go outside in my country, but we'll imagine that. You can't walk for exercise. No. They you will, can't. They will find you, and take you home. You can't walk for exercise. Nope. Well, we can, so it won't work over there. It'll work here, though. Okay. So, you go up, and you got to have a six foot per, six foot distance. Mm -hmm. So this this is so. I guess I have to do it. In Spain, we'll we call some it, young people. In Spain, we call it two meters, but yeah, six foot's fine. Yes. Two meters. Okay. So when you are within the distance that you think between the two of you approaching people that you are the required six foot or close enough to call it six foot, maybe six foot, a little plus mm -hmm. one of the two people stops and puts his hand up like this, which signals that they're going to do a pantomime together. Oh, Jesus. And if the guy on the other side wants to do the pantomime, he does the pantomime and then together they try to do a little Marcel Marceau. Oh, yeah. Could go viral, and what the pantomime is is going up against the glass window, right? Where they reach up and and they palm down, and then they move. Right, so you're they visualizing the sync with each other. You're but visualizing the the separator. Yes, yes, I get so it. So it could go viral, but it would have to be young people doing it who are nimble. I myself am not right. nimble, and people that, I would fall, which yeah. means we have to get somebody from another country to do it. Well, you know what we would call this? No, a, a mime meme. That's good. Capitalize so, all the M's. Yes. My, me, that would be the symbol. My, me, 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 me. That would yeah. be the logo. Capitalize all the M's. 4M. Let's do the 4M. My meme. Huh. It shows us hand, Hanes, Hanes, cotton products. Well, just... What? Just beautiful cotton products. Just just all, all cotton products. Geniuses with cotton products. Underwear... That holds up your balls. Believe me, like I've said, there's no problems down there. None at all. None at all. Dennis, are you okay? <laughs> he is such a grotesque beast. 
So did you get the did you get the the, the drawing I sent you of his hair on fire? Yes. Post that. That's a beauty. Yeah. Let's take a look at it. Should put it put it in your chat box. Come on, man. Do some work over there. I mean, it's Trump with his hair on fire. People can see that. I don't know. I wasn't all that impressed, but I see a whole bunch of of internet uh, images every day. The one thing I wanted to talk to you about was. Um, This interview with Science Magazine with Anthony Fauci. It was published uh, two days ago. No, one yesterday. Yes. Have you seen this? Which is why he wasn't on. Why he, I don't know, I've heard about it, but it's why he wasn't on stage yesterday. He's so. He's so. One of the questions was uh, the first question. Well, here we'll start with the, at the beginning. The first question everyone has is, "How are you?" He says, well, I'm sort of exhausted, but other than that, I'm good. I mean, I'm not, to my knowledge, coronavirus infected. To my knowledge, I haven't been fired. Ha ha ha. And he says, well, how are you managing not to get fired? Well, that's a pretty interesting be- because to Trump's credit, even though we disagree on some things, he listens. He goes out of his way. He, he go- No, he, out of his- Trump goes out of his way. Excuse me. He goes his own way and has his own style. Uh, but on substantive issues, he does listen to what I say. You've been in several press conferences where things have been happening that you disagree with. Is that fair to say? Well, I don't disagree with a substance. It is expressed in a way that I would not express it. But because it could lead to some misunderstanding about what the facts are on a given, on a given subject. And Let's see. Uh, <laughs> this is a great question. You, you stood nearby while President Trump was in the Rose Garden shaking hands with people. You're a doctor. You must have had a reaction like, sir, please don't do that. <laughs> he says... Yes, I say that to the task force. To the task force, I say that to the staff. We should not be doing that. You know, blah blah blah. We I say that all the time. Uh, but you know, when you're dealing with this with this White House, sometimes you have to say things one, two, three, four times, and then it happens. So I'm just going to keep pushing. It's like having a fucking toddler. Uh, oh my god! And you see where he said, "Well, what do you expect me to do?" Yeah, my my favorite I part. Wait, I, right? Is, yeah. that, is that is that the interview? Yeah, yeah. He says is that the one. He says, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, what about travel restrictions? Okay. Trump, see, Trump keeps saying that the travel ban on China, which began in, on the 2nd of February, which had a big impact, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it just doesn't comport. What he's saying doesn't comport with the facts. He says, I know, but what do you want me to do? I mean, seriously, John, let's get real. What do you want me to do? And you know he really wanted to say, what do you fucking want me to do? Yeah, uh, yeah. And Who's John, the interviewer? The interviewer, or whoever it is. But it, it was just this this uh, this interview with a with, with a with a with a somehow a clever person inside the Trump administration who just must be pulling his hair out every day and as we saw earlier trying not to giggle when he's on camera because the president is saying the stupidest possible shit the other the other camera shot that's interesting to him and you'd have to be pretty quick with the uh you know with the uh, the stall on, <clears throat> on the on the video yeah but when when he attacks the reporter there is a shot that's just a split second of Fauci and he looks literally Unnerved. Yes, there is a jolt in his look. It's it it's oh my disturbing. And of course, so Trump's tweet last night was, you know, we'll have to take a look in two weeks, and and, and see whether or not the the, the cure is uh, is is worse is worse than the disease. No, it wasn't because like that. It was in it was in all caps. It said the worst thing we can do is have the cure be worse than the disease. Just like shouting he's, he's like a lunatic. Back. He's he's getting pushed back from. From people that are saying that people, uh, at a certain point, they should be allowed to have masks and go to work and non-essential. And it's like, well, you know, it's the, what the thing to say is, well, maybe we got a few things to take care of first. We don't need to worry about that now. That decision isn't coming for a long time. We don't know what this is. It's the invisible. I like to call it the invisible. Yes, it's it's invisible enemy, because you you can't see it. You can't see it. It is in fact invisible. This, this is inside the mind of a fucking five-year-old. Yes. A five-year-old. No, I mean, my, my, my six-year-old would not say something that stupid. Like, he, I've lost billions. I've lost billions. Billions, but I'm rich. Well. Yeah, I've been, I've been right a lot. My 401k huh? certainly took a, took a hit. Oh, Jesus. God almighty. And instead of nationalizing, these companies are saying we can do it. And so Governor Cuomo comes on the air and he's sitting down as he is in his big table. He's got two guys, one on either side of him, one budget guy, one an operations guy. They're six feet apart. They got the big screens behind them. All the reporters are six feet apart. It's a huge room, not many people. And he says, so, you know, the federal government's not helping us, so we get our own. So we got a manufacturer. We used to get them for 80 cents a mask. 
he's charging four dollars. So he shrugs his shoulders. He says, and so so there's price gouging. And you know what? We're just going to pay it. We need them tomorrow. And he said, that's just the way it is. If the federal government nationalized, of course, I'm saying this, if they nationalized, they control the prices. And what the people were saying who are doing the good work, the corporations are saying, if you nationalize it, you will control prices. There is money to be made here from 80 cents to four dollars a mask. And that is what he's listening to. And don't let anybody tell you that the corporate elite are looking to make a fucking killing mm -hmm. off as much of this as they can with their fucking bailouts and their payoffs. Sure. Yeah, like I've my uh, my market holdings have lost a whole ton of money. Uh, oh, I just I don't even look. It's better I not just, to. I, but but I'm just not looking. But my I'm not going anywhere with. Right, but my the, my rationale is look, uh, the the most powerful people in the world, their incentives are aligned with getting my stocks back up, and therefore, it's going to be okay. Like uh, over the long haul. Over the long haul. Like, I'm not looking to cash out my retirement right. fund uh, right. in five years. It's going to be longer. And therefore, I think that in 10 years, my my retirement fund is going to be just as it would have been without this virus. Uh, right. But in the meantime, yeah, it's, like, it's better, not, it's better not to look at. Right, right. So Well, it's, uh, it's crazy. But so who, who would we get to do this mime recording? Think about our, our our pals. You know who would do it is uh, Tall Paul. He would, well, he would be a spider. He would be a spider monkey like practitioner of the uh, Marcel Marceau up against the glass uh, greeting. If you could get some twins to do it, like a couple uh, a couple pairs of twins that look like they're just walking down 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 the park uh, lane, and then they run into their their opposite twin and start doing the. Uh, the uh, like social distancing. Oh well, that's that's a little cheesy. I was thinking more cheesy than, than the whole you. premise to begin with. Oh yes, yeah, I'm sorry actually, yeah. for actually, pouring yeah. cheese on your nachos. Jesus. <laughs> actually, yes, because in my in my it's uh, we're not staging who they are. We're just getting two people to really do it. Uh, not, not getting, not not recruiting, not casting it per se. Except somebody's got they got to have two people that, that are going to do it. Tall Paul would be one. Who would the other one be? Who would the other one be? That we know? I don't know, man. I think your dad could do it. He's not a big into mime, but Will, I don't know, Will. But he could be. He could he be. He could be. With some practice. That, so I went immediately to Twins because I recently rewatched a video that I saw four or five years ago. A really, Are you familiar with... Um, the name is escaping me at the moment, but it's this, it's this uh, improv comedy troupe that stages uh, stuff in the real world where they sort of... It's... Um, it's not a flash mob, but they're 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 acting out a scene where no one else is really privy to the fact that they're acting out a scene. Um, uh -huh, uh -huh. Anyway, there's this one video from a couple years ago that I will put in the show notes at happyhour.fm slash zero five three, where it's uh, so the premise is there's this guy on the subway um, who's walking around with a with a with a cup saying, "Hey, uh, I need donations. Um, I'm building a time machine. I'm just about to finish my time machine. It's almost done. Please help me out." And some people are like, yeah, I'll give you a little bit. And other people are like, nah, I don't know about that. Anyway, they come to the next station and a, a guy runs in that looks just like the guy that's asking for the time machine. Uh, it's, it's, it's his twin with a, with a beard, with a, more of a beard. And he's like, don't give this man any money for his time machine. The time machine was a total failure. It did not work. And people are like, what is going on? You, is this like a twin thing? You guys are doing a twin thing. And then at the next station, a guy comes in that is the twin of the guy that just said, you guys are doing a twin thing. And he's like, don't really. I'm from the future. Do. Don't give this guy any money. Another set of twins? There, and there's like four sets of twins that, are, that, that oh act out this God. whole thing of, of what it would look like if, uh, if your future self came back and was, and was like trying. To. And they do this in real time, like in yeah. malls or in well, it was it was no, stores. it was it was just this one uh, event in the subway, but just this this oh, right, right, this right. idea of uh, of imagining, you know, what's what it would like, what if if like all of these people knew that this was the pivotal moment where people either gave him money to build a time machine and he built it, or they didn't and he didn't, uh, and it's <laughs> it's just a cleverly written uh, time travel conceit that I appreciated. It's a great storyline. Wow. Yes. That's what you're posting now. That's great. So we had snow last night. We got snow last night. You, I, Three inches. I, heard, I, there was, I saw videos of snow today in Michigan. 
three inches. Yeah, it's all gone now. It was 44 degrees. I walked for two hours today in the in the in the wildness. With your laser cane? <laughs> no, but I did use a branch for a cane, which made me think of it. But it's you know it's what I do before happy hour. In my new my new schedule, but you know I was working virtual before this all hit, so I'm just still doing it. I have some. I have some. The only difference is I'm not actually getting paid for it. I'm doing development work, so hopefully it'll pay off. But right, it is what it is. But I'm busy. I have some podcast charting news. We are back on the charts. Uh, yes. Not in Uruguay, but uh, in the United States, for the comedy podcasts, we are number four hundred and ninety-five in the rankings. That's smooth. Move- it's moving up. That's pretty. That's pretty wild. And for and, and 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 Lord help us for USA News podcasts, we are five hundred and twenty-one. So some some people are like getting news from this uh, podcast, which <laughs> that's scary. Uh, yeah, Lord help you guys. Yeah, uh, that's scary. And well, global I did notice that, that and and downloads glo- are up two hundred two percent. Yes, well, that's because everything's just going going great. Everyone is locked at home. <laughs> they they need something to to <laughs> to uh, someone to talk into their ears, and right. here we are. Talking into your ears about you know, and you got you got to imagine that there's enough people out there whose lives right now are so fucking boring that we're even interesting to them in increasing numbers. Their standards, the more their standards to drop, the more our popularity will grow. It's almost a, it's an equation. It's E equals MC squared. Inversely proportional. Better, so. Absolutely. Our Absolutely. our popularity is one over their standards, and you know what we just figured out? The denominator. The the their, their boredom. Look, the our listeners' boredom is the denominator. So so <laughs> so we probably reached an all time high right now because wait wait wait, wait no if if they went any slower wait no that's wrong that's wrong slower, that's wrong if the, we would if be the, fucking rotting if the denominator gets big <laughs> then the number goes down that's bad you wish your denominator grew at will yes too well. bad it doesn't <laughs> yes swell. Yeah, exactly. No pun intended. Yes, swell. You devil. I wish my you're, fraction was you're, lower. You're just gritty, gritty, uh, muddy, dark. Gritty, gritty, bang, bang. Ob- obs- <laughs> <laughs> Observer of the world, insightful as you are, but you have a dark side about you. Well, we, some of us do. Where the, the sun don't shine is my dark side. It's- your little Brooklyn condo with all of you freaks. Yeah, the whole lockdown about. thing has, has been really tight on the on the condo. Right, on my condo mates. I heard that uh, one of your uh, two microwaves burn out, so lines are not only longer but but much slower, and they're now queuing queuing right down into the into the basement, and just to get to the microwave to to, to heat up your pop tarts. And you know how long it takes to get to the microwave? When every time you pass someone, you have to do this mime dance, where you where you simulate. A pop tart popping out of the toaster, you you just go like you're jump up. It's the it's the pop it's the pop tart. Uh... So I yes. bought a I bought a new toaster a few uh, weeks ago. Ah, the, other, the old one was not not crisping my toast in any uniformity, and it seemed a bit dangerous. And so I tossed it, and I bought I bought one, and I put the toast in, and I realized unlike my old one, where you could hit a button and it would pop up. Sometimes with some acceleration, so that you could kind of catch it when it came out a little bit. But just at the top of it, as it sprang out, because you hit a button, it sprang up a little bit. But this one has no such. Button. Wait, hold, hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm picturing way- I'm picturing you as a dog catching a frisbee in your mouth. Is that accurate? The, oh, you press Lord, the button. That would be- the toast pops out, <laughs> and you're just like. <laughs> no. Okay. Sorry. Hey, wait. I'll try that because let me tell you why I can't. Because a new toaster doesn't have a button. So the only way to get it to pop is to force the spring mechanism to act like it's over, which requires you to really push it up. When you do and it springs up, the entire toast will come out of the toaster and there will be airspace between the toaster and the bottom of the toast. Gotcha. So you can catch it right in front of your face. In your mouth. In your mouth. Or what I will try tomorrow in front of my wife is I will try to catch it in my teeth. Now, if I do catch it in my teeth, it'll be so hot it'll burn me, but it'll be worth it. What are a few blisters? Well... It'd be worth it. As long as your as long as, as long as your wife says, "Good, who's a good boy?" When you do it, <laughs> oh, 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 you're such a good boy. Oh, such a good boy. Rub my hair. So, so your so your new toaster crisps your toast, and bounds it out 
in what I do because I like it particularly Christmas. <clears throat> I like a Christmas sandwich to the bit. I'll show it like that would do it in Liverpool. Well, I say toast. I mean, it needs to be toast. It needs to be brittle. You put it in your mouth, it needs to crunch. It needs to crumble in your mouth. It's saturated with butter. It's, but it's got to be near the bed. Mm. And if it's a little bit, all the better to show the difference. Show the difference. So I put it in twice. Mm. The second, Double crisps. If I'm not timely, we have smoke, we have trouble. It's one of the reasons the other toaster just didn't make it because I was overcooking it. And, and on many occasions forgot about it so that the house filled up with smoke, actually, to the point that the alarms went off. And by the time my wife came in three hours later, this is, you know, a month or so ago, I had all the doors open and sanitizer going, and she came in the door, and the first thing she said is, what did you burn? <laughs> and I had worked on it so hard <laughs> and so thoroughly. Please don't catch wipe me. Stuff down, yeah. Wipe stuff down, and because it was just me being so dull-witted. It was just me being stupid. Yes. I don't, know, I don't know what that's like. Box of, Watch. <laughs> Believe me, you might not, but your wife does. <laughs> she she knows she knows your wife's feeling in that moment. Yes, for sure. Yeah, the toasting is a toasting is a complicated aspect of life. You know, man. Hey, you know, you got time on your hands now. I mean, why not spring up the toast and try to catch it in your mouth and get it all get all of it on video even if it might burn your mouth a little bit. Imagine catching a piece of toast in the air and the tip of it actually smoldering smoke and it in your mouth at the same time. And I blow a smoke that ring. That would be way cool. And I, I, take, I take out the toast and I blow a smoke ring. <laughs> <laughs> you can make this happen. You just have, There's a lot of people out of work. Take some of the money we're pulling in. If I put half a stick of butter in my mouth yeah. first, huh. then I can like butter the toast while it's in my mouth. Nah, maybe that's not a huh. good idea. Well, how about this? How about this? Toast pops out, catch it in your teeth, hold it flat, however you catch it, hold it flat, and immediately pour butter on it before crunching it. And then gobble the rest of it down just with no hands. You catch it. No, no, no. you got to use hands. You don't want to waste any of it. None of it. None of it. You don't want to waste a crumb. Okay. Catch it. Pour the Pour the butter. butter. And crunch. then crunch, crunch, crunch. How about this? Yes. How about instead of a regular size piece of bread, we use those little tiny pieces of bread that are about a quarter the size of a piece of bread. In fact, if it were a square piece of bread or a rectangular piece of bread, it would be a quarter of it. That's how big the loaves are. You put that in the toaster, and then it's so crisp that when they pop up in the air, you can bite the entire thing in one bite right into your mouth. <laughs> and then the next one pops up, and you do it again. <laughs> right? Like, I think skeet shooting is just... Yesterday, it's, this is the future. What would we call it? What would we call it? Uh, uh, skeet mouth, toast, skeet mouth shooting, toast. Uh, let's see, bread, toast, air, airborne, air toast. Hmm. We need to workshop this a little bit. We need to pull out the whiteboard. Uh, <laughs> throw some, throw some toast Wait on the wall. Minute. Wait a minute. Let's just act like it's a whiteboard. Oh yes, I totally see the whiteboard you've pulled out. Yes. All right, so what's that you're writing? Well, I'm writing toast and crumbs and skeet. Shotgun. Shotgun toasting. Uh, toast. Hmm. Toast on the water. Fire in my mouth. Yeah. Well, this is the sort of thing that you publish on Twitter and then it goes viral and everyone is then like uh, hashtag toast challenge yeah you know what I haven't heard enough of I haven't heard enough of Frank Zappa you would think that his genius would be like to the hand washing thing brown shoes da-da-da. don't make it da-da. brown shoes da-da-da. why fake it da-da. in school da-da. why take it da-da. Brown shoes, Obana. Why fake it? TV dinner by the pool. What's your brother gonna be? Got another year of school. That's okay. He's too weird. He's a mother. He's a mother. He's a brother. He's a he's a royal plastic servant of the world. Wow. That never be. That's the hand washing. So just twenty five seconds. Hold on, hold on. I want to pull back a second. Let me talk to the listener for a moment. I also don't know what the fuck Dennis is gonna say in the next moment. Uh, that was just 
out of left field. What? Zep- Zeppo. Left field? Left field, you say? Hey, try a bit of I, was talking, of- I was talking to the listener. <laughs> Are, it's the like left cricket field? Because if you're going to be British, they don't play baseball. Man. Like, you just struck out. You just you just got toasted. Toast hey, so let me let me ask you a question. You know, uh, you know uh, the, the writer Larry McMurtry, the American Western writer Larry McMurtry. I have because I looked it up because you mentioned it once. Him. Okay. Well, no, I've, I've just I'll point this out and we'll move on. But I'm now in my third or fourth complete reading of the four book uh, quadril, quad, quadrilogy. Quadrilogy. <laughs> quadrilogy. Quadrilogy. Quad- Quadrilogy. No, that no. Trillo. No, no, no. Quadrigy. Anyway, four books. And um, acquaint yourself with it if you've got reading time. Do you have much more time on your hands? Uh, no? no, because I have children to look after. Right. That's all right. That's all right. And also, by the way, I haven't told you this yet, but I just got fired from my job. Uh, In what sense? Like I got laid off. Uh, I'm looking for a job. Is that true? <laughs> it's absolutely true. <laughs> Uh, oh my God. Yeah. So, how's your savings account? Exactly. My savings account is in the fucking stock market. Um, uh, all of it? Well, some of it. But three months. You got three months cushion. But I. But my my. Luckily, I'm in a situation where I'm not too worried because I've got crazy mad skills that will you're, you're, find my your skills are in demand. Yes. Uh, but it's kind of destabilizing to. Sure. Right, bef- right before you know this wave of death right. descends upon us, to be told, oh, by the way, you no longer have a steady income. Right. Uh, right. Well, it's so so juxtapose that with our situation where we got on the public dole about two months ago, both collecting Social Security, both collecting our retirement, and so we worked out that we don't need to work anymore. Uh-huh. And now, in fact, that's pretty good because <clears throat> we can't work anymore. Right. My job depends at some point on making money. I have to travel. Mm-hmm. I have to travel. Now, I can do a lot of it, telecommunication, etc. But at some point. You got to get a lot of people interacting, which means, very simply, it's postponed. Mm-hmm. Period. Yep. So much other things. So it's a development phase for me, which doesn't much matter. But my, my finances were worked out, and I needed to work. Right. Exactly. And so I got a couple of little, a couple of little gigs, made a little bit of money, and that's all a little bit of cushion, which is good because I can help my family, and, and we can have a little bit of cushion. But we don't have to have it. The belt's right. tight, mm-hmm. you know. And so we're blessed by that. Um, but you know, for people out there in the, in, in the world who don't have what we have, we haven't paid income taxes in years and, and lived mouth to mouth. And it's only about two things for them, food and rent. And, it's, and, and rent. If, you're, if, you're, if your job is a service job where you are getting paid by the hour at a, at a, at a restaurant, you are just... Uh, Looking well, for more hours, 12 hours and only 16 hours, but never more than 30. So you're never an employee and you never have benefits and you just make what you can make. And can I get more hours? And why did you cut me back? And now no... Lower hours, lower hours. You're on the takeout line. The takeout line isn't working too hot. Now you, it's not that you're laid off because you were never fucking employed. Well, you were a contract laborer. Yeah, there's there, there's that there's that shitstorm, but there's also people that uh, were employees that were working hourly, where their hours got dialed down to zero, which means that they both do not get health care and also are not legally unemployed. So. Right, you're just you're right. Fuck both ways. They're, they're in another another one of a no man's land among many. Right, you know, and and it just I feel so. I love the I love the thing you sent me uh, that showed the. I'm, I don't think we have discussed this, but post on the notes of the that everyone has seen probably went viral by now, which is him him using his black fucking marquee yeah to cross out Corona and call it Chinese yes uh, and and just insisting. And we, they kicked out our press. They kicked out our ambassadors. And guess who's got all the fucking equipment that we may need if they're really seeing a downswing? Guess who has more equipment than what we need in the entire fucking United States? And he has pissed them off mm-hmm. so bad. Yes, I, I shared that. I shared that on. on oh, fa- I love him. I shared that. I shared that image on Facebook. It was the photograph was from a Washington Post photographer. I shared that on Facebook, and and I got some people saying, "That's fake. That looks photoshopped. That's not real." Uh, and of course, which, which one? Which photo? The the one of the of the sharpie over the uh, crossing. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, right. But of course, it is totally hundred percent real. Uh, like it's just with that level of zoom, some things get blurry when others aren't. But uh, yeah, it's just a total shit show. Meltdown. Fuck total uh, meltdown. Cluster fuck shit show, as they as they say. Yeah. So my uh, my my kids. It's, it's, that's a country tune, man. 
It's a clusterfuck shit show downtown. I don't know. It's just another shit show. It's just another Broglio. It's just another shit show. Oh, no, where we going to go? It's just another fuck job. It's going to be a cock job. And we're never going to know it till the cows don't come home. Speaking of country. It's another shit show. Did you see where uh, Kenny Rogers <laughs> had to fold him? Oh, hey, man. Raise your glass. Raise your glass, bro. I... You got to know when to hold them. Know when to fold them. Know when to walk away and know when to run. You never count your money while you're sitting at the table. There'll be time enough for counting when the day is done. Amen. Rest in peace, Kenny. Yeah, man. Him and, and you know, he and uh, Dolly Parton did a duo together where um, he was in his late 70s and knew it was his last tour. And Dolly pushed upon him and said, we have got to get together. We've got to do this together. And they did it. And it transcended anything they had ever done. That was the before. first that was the first uh, image that showed up uh, when I when I just uh, Googled uh, Kenny Rogers. It's now. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's a wonderful thing. And, you know, he was a stand up bass player back in the day. Was he? And got his got his break when he was was uh, asked to also sing in the in the new Christy Minstrels I think was the name of it, um, and then went from there and started playing as the first edition. I just walked in to see what condition my condition was in. Yeah, yeah, yes. oh yeah, what condition my condition was in. I know that's and right. you know who 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 at the time uh, 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 who was a uh, John Belushi guitarist. Uh, John Belushi and uh, Dan Aykroyd. Blues no, 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 the, no the, the guitar player who, uh, who this uh, this first edition song emulated. It, it, you can catch the t- tones in it when when you think about it. Hmm. Um, but uh, at any rate, I, I can't <clears throat> put my. You know, so good, there's amazing a, stuff for for people listening to the to this that like listening to podcasts, but want more podcasts that are more interesting. There is an amazing podcast all about Dolly Parton. Uh, it's like a six or eight uh, episode. Uh, six or eight hour uh, series that was done by the people that make Radio Lab out of New York City, uh, and it is just really fascinating. They they went chock and, full of her singing, chock full of her singing and interviews with her, and uh, the 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 weird thing about Dolly Parton is that everyone likes her. Like we are we are currently our nation is so divided that you're either on uh, on this side or on that side, but people on all sides. Dolly Parton is one of the people that everyone agrees is an amazing person because she's always sung about uh, liberal feminine feminism values, but she never, ever, ever, you cannot get her to say a political thing against a party or a, or a politician or anything. She, uh, she just says, I don't do politics. And she steps away from, from, from that. And, and she's a country singer. So the people on the right love her and the people on the left love her because they actually listen to what she's singing about. Uh, and she's just this grand unifying force. And I will definitely put a link in the show notes to that uh, at happier.fm slash 053 53, the Joker episode. The Joker. That reminds me of that. Uh, the, mime, the meme mime. Like, mm, My meme. Rafferty. Rafferty's uh, uh, guitar album. What the fuck is the name of that? Rafferty. Is that with a T? Yeah. Bill Rafferty. I guess comedian. No. Uh, guitar. Rafferty. Guitar. Finding your way down Baker Street. A smile in your heart and a palm and a beat. Ger- and a Ger- Baker Street. Down. I got it. Baker Street. Ger- Gerald Rafferty. A Scottish. Jerry Rafferty. Yes. Jerry. Jerry. A Sc- yeah. Scottish rock singer songwriter. His solo hits in the 1970s included Baker Street, Right Down the Lane, and Night Owl. As well as I got stuck in the middle with you. I'm buying some land. I'm gonna give up the blues and a one night stand. And instead, I'll settle down some sleepy little town and forget about everything. Wow! So he wrote "Stuck in the Middle with You." That's a that's a really popular. That is the reason that I contemplated it because Joker's to the left. Is in fact about the Joker. Yes, got it. The Joker episode. Joker's to the left. Joker's to the right. Here I am, stuck in the middle with you. Well, I'm stuck in the middle with you. And I don't know what it is I will do. I'm so scared, I think I'll fall off my chair. 
Well, clowns to the left of me, jokers to the right. Clowns to the left of me, jokers to the right. Here I am, stuck in the middle with you. Well, it, doesn't that just represent our political situation? Clowns to the yeah. left, jokers to the right. Jokers. And here we are, here stuck in the fucking middle. <laughs> uh, lordy, lordy, lordy. I was scared, I think I'll fall off my chair. And I don't know how I'll be down there. Jokers to the left of me. Clowns to Fools the... to the right, here I am. Stuck in the middle with you. Amen. Ooh, ooh. Oh, well. Jerry Rafferty, that album has got to be one of my top all-time albums, song after song after song. It's, it's miraculous. Uh, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not so familiar with him. I mean, that song is, is imprinted in my cultural brain, but uh, I'm going to look up that album and uh, give it a listen this week. My, my daughter is turning 11 years old tomorrow. It's going to be 11 years that I've been a father. Wow. So that's pretty wild. Hey, let's 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 drink some alcohol or, to your daughter. Yeah. You. Let's, <laughs> let's, this here, parenting here, shit, here. let's just... Uh... Here, here's some little shit. Happy <laughs> birthday. <laughs> Uncle Dennis <laughs> sends his oh, regards. Hey, come over here. Let me, let me talk to you. Listen, don't, listen, don't always think you got to listen to what your parents say. Sometimes they're full of shit. You with me? Well, I kind of thought so, yeah. Dig deep. God. Examine. Examine. You don't have to just fall in line. You're 11 now. Soon you'll be a teenager. Well, that's a couple years away. It's tomorrow. <laughs> it's tomorrow. You're nearly an adult. Uncle Joe Biden. Time you started acting like one. Here, take the mop. Don't go back. No more. <laughs> no more stocking feet. Instead, mop the floors. Indeed. You said earlier that, that, that one of the salient factors of our current environment, and I just wondered out loud, do we have to soak it in salt? I didn't know that that was part of what we're saying. What do we soak in salt? The ideas? Do we have a vat, like an idea vat, a conceptual vat that's soaked in conceptual salts and it's marinated and okay. ready for what? Look, we, we take the issues of the day in this podcast. We take the issues of the day and we soak them in salty language. And... Out they come, uh, you know, just um, uh, savory. It's we, we we take we're all about savory issues on this podcast. Be, is it as that, savory as your asso? What is it as savory as your asso? Almost. You would know. <sighs> oh, that's nice. You. You, you didn't have to go there. That was, say you're dark. <laughs> you, you are dark. No. To take us, went too far, and you went way too far. That's what you do. It's more sweet than dark. savory, I think. <laughs> you ought to know, Mr. Contortionist motherfucker. Fucking nobody knows that. That extra foot you have grown out of your forehead is grown for expressly that purpose, so that you can massage yourself with more than two limbs at once. Look, hygiene is really important in this day and age. You need to clean all your orifices as thoroughly as possible. Sing a little song stuck in the middle with you while you're while you're washing your hands or while you're firing lasers at people walking by you in the park. Pew 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 you say. Pew 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 pew. That'd be get another thing. Get, get away from me. Set phaser on stun. Pew pew pew. Hey! Hey! Slow down, buddy. Because he's marshalling towards you, right? Anyway, I think the I I think uh, we need to do this. Well, we we'll have to figure it out. This is part of your job as producers: contact Tall Paul and contact short Paul. 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 Well, is he really short or is he just regular Paul? I'll contact the, not the Pauls. Paul and Tall Paul. The Pauls. Regular Paul and Tall Paul. Yes. And see if they'll do it, and then arrange for videotaping in the woods. Get a grant. A grant. A, a Paul Mime grant. A what? It's, a, it's the Paul Mime project. The Paul Mime? Paul Mi Mime. They're miming, right? Uh, right, right. Hey, right. I know our slogan. I know, hey. our, I know our slogan. Hey, hey, hey. hey what? You need, hey. To, you need to think inside the box. No, I, you're stuck inside the box. Get used to it. 
Do I got to think inside the box? Be the box. You are the box. There is no box. The box is you. Break oh. through it. No, don't break through it. Stay inside it. <laughs> there is no box. You're the box. Be the think box. Straight through it. Be the box that you are. No, don't go through the box, Dennis. You're, you're trying to put some, you know, Kool Aid man breaking through imagery in here that we don't need. Uh, every, every time I picture this, it's being said by a man in boxers. <clears throat> every, time. every. That's the trademark. Every one of us is a box. You're a box. I'm a box. On the clearing stands a boxer and a fighter by his trade, and he carries the reminder of every glove and fisted tool that laid him till he cried out in his anger and his shame. I am leaving, I am leaving, but the fighter still remains. Ooh. Indeed. The, the glove cut him, but anyway. Our... It cut him till he cried out. There you go. Cut him. Cut him till he cried out. Cut him! What? So... Uh, what? <laughs> you said what? <sighs> so we watched the uh, Inside the Mind of Robin Williams documentary, and I have to admit to crying nonstop for two hours plus, either out of sheer joy or anguish for the entire two hours. When it was over, I was a swollen, Kleenex-ridden mess. Wow. It was so fucking astounding. So emotional. Just, just... Rolling on, uh, rolling on the ground, laughing from this crazy. Sh he does a shtick where he acts like his penis is a pal or a protege who has his own life, who he brings into a bar, and there's a little bar low for his penis, and there's a bar for him, and the penis who squints out of one eye says, "I'll have what he's having," and it's a dialogue between him and his detached on his own penis, which he unstraps and says, "You're on your own," and they're in a bar together. It's it's the it's just volcanic, volcanic. Oh my God! To the highs and to the lows of his amazingly uh, sensitive, you know, underneath it all. Right. Um, and he grew up here in Michigan, you know. Okay. Well, anyone listening that is looking for adjectives to write their review for our podcast, uh, go back thirty seconds and listen to all that. That was just beautiful. Wait. Thank you. Are you? I don't know. I can't remember what are I you, said. You, Thank you for today. Wait, in this podcast, are you Robin or the penis? <laughs> I'm actually both. Okay. But, but it's funny when he does when he does the imitation of the penis, it's actually his Popeye voice. Right. Where when he spoke his Popeye, he only had one eye. And they tried in the documentary, you learn that the people who were directing tried to get him not to squint, <laughs> right? And, and work with more than one eye. And he's, he refused and he said, no, I've only got one eye. That's why I'm Popeye. And he and he, he went through it. So when he does the Popeye voice, it's the same voice as he does in his stand-up for the voice of his penis <laughs> with a squinting, with the same squinting one eye. Right. It's a pirate's voice. Right. <laughs> hey, I'll just have what he has. Wait a minute. Who's that? What's your name? <laughs> oh, too funny. Speaking of uh, pirates, I... Got around finally to showing my children last night the movie Goonies. You familiar with this movie? Maybe it was it's it's mid eighties. Oh, if to my generation, yeah, it's, it's very it's very uh, formative uh, of this group of uh, teens that are uh, that go hunting for pirate treasure. Uh, right, and they're, they're cool kids. Yeah, they're they're so well, some cool kids and some nerd kids, and uh, like the Breakfast Club in my generation. Your, well, that's actually your generation. Older than Breakfast Club. Breakfast Club is a little bit older than my generation, but um, but but yes, similar to that. Uh, and it was there's some sort of scary, you know, you roll over and there and you're face to face with a dead body sort of uh, shock scenes in that. Uh, but uh, they survived, and my 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 soon to be 11 year old uh, really loved it. She's she really she really dig, she really digs the um, the as did I when I saw it, the teen awkwardness around like who's going to kiss who uh, sort of uh -huh. sort of uh, uh -huh. sort of thing. Uh -huh. so. So, I, I kissed my first girl and I tell you the story in the episodes where where the, where we were in this garage that was big enough to hold a couple of cars, but they had put in a storage cabinet that was like an old stereo. 
that you could slide open the doors and there was a hidden cupboard in there. And so I crawled in the cupboard and they closed the door. And one of the girls in the girls group when we were like 11 years old, 12 years old, was a plant from one of the other guys who was supposed to ask this other girl whether she liked me. And I was in the cabinet listening. And so the one girl says to the other girl, so what do you, what do you think about Dennis? And the girl says, the girl says, uh, oh, I kind of like him. He's cute or something like that. And then the girl turns traitor and says, I, I wonder if he's here. And they end up exposing me. <laughs> and there I am running out of the place and just, you know, running out. <laughs> How that's that's like Hollywood. Uh, mm, awkward, embarrassing <laughs> level of uh, conceit. <laughs> Well, I won't be afraid. Oh, no, I won't be afraid. Just as long as you stand, stand by me. And isn't this a song of the times? Oh, won't you stand? You mean when the mountains crumble to the sea? Stand by me. Not too close now. It's got to be six feet. Mm -hmm. Oh, won't you stand? And together... We'll find a unity. Our distance will tell us apart. Oh, we're together right from the start. And as we stand at distance in unity, in unity. Amen. Oh, won't you stand? Very good. Very good. Over now, my, my man. Over now. I love you, man. Stay healthy. See if we're both around you, next. See you next week. Bye. Peace. Everybody safe. Yes. Stay the fuck at home if you can. Nano, nano. Nano. Okay, that's it for episode number 53. Thank you very much for listening. You can find the show notes at happyhour.fm slash 053. If you'd like to help us make these podcasts, you can go to patreon.com slash happy hour and give us a little monthly donation. That would mean so much to me and Dennis. And please, everyone, just be safe. Stay at home. Cough into your elbow. And we'll see you next week.